Dobar den, počitovani gledači. Deneska je 5. oktomvri 2013. godina i vije ja sledite vaša ta omilena emisija, kako što vi je velite, makedonsko izdanje, koja što se emituva seko aftora sabota v 12.30 popladne na Rogers televizija na kanalite 10, 63, 84 i vo High Definition 510 vo Južno Ontario. Ja sum Pobeda Piskačeva, urednikot i voditelot na ova programa i vo narednite 30. na minuti vi poželu vam dobar prijem. Novata sezona na emisijata na makedonsko izdanje ja započnuvame so intervjuto so gospodinot Sam Vaknin, doktor po filozofija od Izrael, koji momentalno žive vo Makedonija. Gospodinot Vaknin ima napišeno nekoliko knjigi za koji ima dobijeno vrni priznanja, među koji i knjigata posle doždot kako zapadot go izgubi istokot. Toj je i avtor na knjigata Maligna ljubov prema sebe si na vrakjanje vo narcisoidnosta, vo koja je razrabotuva temata na narcisoidnosta, mentalno to porimetuvanje na ličnosta, diagnoza koja što i samijot ja poseduva. Sam Vaknin vo minatoto beše i sovetnik na Ministerstvoto za financi na Republika Makedonija, a e i ekonomski analitičar i sovetnik na poveke biznisi vo Makedonija, Češka i Rusija. Urednik e na web stranata Global Politician, freelance sovetnik na mnogu izraelski firmi za blue chipovi koji se zanimava dvoglavnom so investiciji vo Izrael, Kanada, Velika Britanija i Sojedinetite Amerikanski državi. Gospodin Advaknin je isto tako i freelance novinar za različni medijumi vo Sjedinetite Amerikanski državi, a ureduva i nekoliko web sajtovi. Vo proloženje počtovani gledači prosledite go prvi od del od intervju to što go snimivme pri negovata neodamnešna rabotna poseta na Toronto. We are talking to Mr. Sam Vaknin from... Um, Israel, born in, in Israel, and uh, right now living in Macedonia, and uh, he's visiting uh, Toronto here, so welcome to Macedonian Edition. Thank you for having me on the show. Um, it's very difficult to introduce you, uh, because you are such a, a person with so many uh, careers. How would you self introduce yourself? I think the past is less relevant. Currently I'm an analyst, I'm editor-in-chief of a Global Politician. Um, I collaborate with international media, on coverage of the Balkans and the Middle East, and so, in principle, I'm a journalist. My main career is in psychology. I write uh, psychology textbooks, especially in the field of personality disorders. And you have PhD from um, Pacific Western University? From California Miramar University, yes. And uh, um, you're coming here to Toronto from Macedonia. How many years do you live in Macedonia? On and off since uh, 1996. Uh, we have lived in between. We have lived in Czech Republic, in Russia and so on. But I've been in Macedonia since 1996. Why Macedonia? Uh, I'm impressed with people who are not Macedonians and decide to live in Macedonia for a prolonged time. Well, in my case the answer is simple. I'm married to a lovely Macedonian woman and uh, in my tradition as a Jew, we follow the woman. But uh, many other foreigners remain to live in Macedonia after their assignments are over and so on, because Macedonia is an, an enclave, an island of the world as it used to be, mm -hmm. before materialism and capitalism and before it became ugly. Mm -hmm. So Macedonia, in Macedonia there are still human relations, there are still social interactions, there is still warmth, there is still good food, there's still nature, there's still organic agriculture, things that now the West is trying to go back to exist right, right there in Macedonia. But before you met your wife, right, mm. uh, you already came to Macedonia. Yes, well, I met my wife in Macedonia. But first you 
came to Macedonia. Yes, I came to Macedonia to collaborate with a local uh, businessman, Israeli businessman there. Okay. Mm. My understanding is that you left at one point your country. Why? I left my country in uh, early in the early 90s mm -hmm. because I had a clash with the senior politicians there. I bought a bank at the time. I was a very wealthy individual. I bought a bank and when we entered, when we reviewed the books of the bank, we discovered all kinds of shady and shoddy loans to local politicians. We took all of them to court and that was a big mistake. I ended up uh, serving time in prison um, after they accused me of fraud and so on. And following that, I decided to divorce the state of Israel. And that's what I did. I divorced my homeland and I went looking for another homeland. And I found it in, uh, at, at the beginning in Serbia, but after that in Macedonia. Um, I became interested in your um, writing um, sometime um, in 2001, when you were following the situation in Macedonia that uh, the Western world uh, just, uh, you know, uh, did not uh, um, perceive it as a war, whereas uh, we Macedonians, we thought we were fighting, um, you know, not enemies, but some someone who was already in Macedonia. These were the terrorists and the ethnic Albanians. So uh, it was very interesting how you perceived that situation. Um, tell us why it was very important for you to express your view about that situation at that time. I was deeply involved in the politics of Macedonia since I came. I collaborated with the VMO at the time with uh, headed by Lukcio Gorgievsky, I worked uh, closely with Rajkovsky. I had a student by the name of Nikola Gorgievsky with whom I co-authored a book mm -hmm. about uh, the economy of Macedonia. And then uh, working with Gorgievsky, Gorgievsky was promoted to Minister of Trade and Minister of Finance and it was clear that he's going to become the Prime Minister of Macedonia. So I was deeply enmeshed in Macedonian politics and uh, I thought that by providing a point of view as an Israeli, mm -hmm. because we in Israel suffer from a similar situation. Mm -hmm. There is a minority in Israel of Israeli Arabs. Mm -hmm. They collaborate with Arabs outside the borders of Israel. These Arabs outside the borders of Israel are considered enemies sometimes. There are ins there's insurgency, constant insurgency, there's terrorism, there's so the situation was a bit similar. So I wanted to contribute my Israeli point of view and experience to the analysis of the, of the conflict. The conflict in Macedonia runs deep because there is a substantial, profound and fundamental disagreement about what is the Macedonian state between the Albanians and the Macedonians. As far as the Macedonians are concerned, the Republic of Macedonia is the realization of centuries of dreaming, centuries of dreams. It is the vision of Macedonian nationhood, Macedonian uh, self-identity and Macedonian expression. Finally, Macedonians can identify themselves as Macedonians, can speak a language which they uh, uh, feel comfortable with and, and is distinct from other languages in the region and so on and so forth. It is a 19th century vision. It's the nation state, a state within which there is a homogeneous national entity. The Albanians, on the other hand, regard Macedonia as a kind of a business venture. It's a collaboration between constituent ethnicities. These ethnicities work together within the framework of an agreement, and indeed there is a framework agreement, and uh, they collaborate in sharing the benefits of the state. Um, if the collaboration goes sour and the business is no longer feasible, the Albanians don't see any reason why to keep the business going. So they retain the right to revise the agreement or to withdraw altogether or to join other uh, participants or to... It, for them, the Republic of Macedonia is a continuous state of negotiation. 
for them, Republic of Macedonia is a reflection of the division of spoils, the spoils of state. The Macedonians don't see the country uh, that way. The Macedonians see the country as a dream. The Albanians see the country as a, as a venture, a joint venture. And this joint venture might go uh, even into greater Albania, as uh, some people, some politicians are saying. So mm -hmm. how do we, you know, approach this problem? I think the issue of greater Albania is a red herring. I don't think the vast majority of Albanians consider greater Albania to be a practical, implementable political agenda. It is the dream of a few fringe groups and radical Albanians here and there. Within the Albanian ethnicity or community, there are serious divisions between Gags and Tosks and between both of them and the Kosovars, etc., etc. So I think, I think a greater Albania is not the issue. But the issue is that Albanians reserve the right to secede from the state, to withdraw, to renegotiate the contract of state, to take over, to join others, including Albania proper or Kosovo proper, should the opportunity present itself. They don't regard Macedonia as indivisible, as integral, and as essentially the homeland of the Macedonians. They don't agree with that. They have a frame of mind which is more akin to Yugoslavia, where in Yugoslavia you had constituent nations and some autonomous regions that together formed a federation. So the, the Albanian state of mind is, is a more federated or federal state of mind. Macedonians don't see it that way. This is the source of the problem. And this is why no peace or arrangement or agreement between these two ethnicities can hold water for long. Which brings us to today's mm. situation. How mm. do you perceive it today? Uh, which point of view? The political situation? Political situation in our country. Using the framework agreement of 2001 as leverage, the Albanians have uh, insinuated themselves into state institutions in increasing numbers. Um, the current budget, for instance, allocates 15% more additional funds to absorbing minority workers. The Albanians have uh, taken over a large number of local municipalities. They have, um, they kind of force the Macedonian majority to accept several Albanian national symbols, and of course the language, as part of the Albanian of the Macedonian state. They openly um, admit that they consider themselves part of a great cultural sphere, not political sphere, but cultural sphere of Albania. So when you go to Albanian villages and so on, you see flags which have nothing to do with Macedonia. You see, you hear songs which have nothing to do with Macedonia. They all have to do with Albanian aspirations, Albanian culture. There's nothing wrong with that. But when it is allied and affiliated with political formal institutions, that's a problem because it indicates a wish to secede, a wish not to belong. Albanians uh, use the framework agreement and the involvement of the international community to abscond with ever growing an ever growing part of the economic cake of Macedonia, the economic resources of Macedonia. But that's, that's a minor issue. The major issue is that the vast majority of Albanians who work in the state administration are uneducated, not skilled, and they retard the civil service in Macedonia. They, they cause damage rather than help. They also have a different perception of what the state is and of the relationship between citizen and state. Albanians generally regard the state as a kind of enemy to be avoided. They regard taxes as uh, something to be evaded. They, so they have a different perception of, of the state. They are much more tribal, much more clannish, much, more, much less inclined to believe in institutions or support institutions. Macedonians also have this, but to a much lesser extent. So it's not working. The whole situation is, is not working. Uh, as long as the Albanians are able to blackmail the Macedonian part, effectively, using, the, using threats or using the international community, there is a, an appearance of peace. But under the surface, there are forces at work that will inevitably yield, to an, uh, yield or lead to a, uh, another conflict. Another conflict is inevitable, in my view.
That is a view of many, many uh, people who are uh, really uh, deeply involved uh, in uh, the uh, situation on the Balkans, right? Uh, I think that you would be the perfect person to ask you about the problems other than um, Albanians and um, their view about uh, our country, about uh, our southern neighbors <laughs> and their view and uh, their problem with our name. Greece uh, has a problem with the name, or at least that's what they claim, but I think the, the problem runs deeper. Greeks, uh, the, the Greek state, the Greek entity, finds it very difficult to accept that there is uh, an independent um, Macedonian uh, state or nation state on their doorstep. They believe that Macedonia is an unstable political entity whose, whose days are numbered. They believe that uh, Macedonians are not a real nation, but a kind of hodgepodge of uh, ethnicities, nationalities, fragment, fragmented groups, and so on and so forth, who have usurped their own tradition and history. And but the Greeks, the Greek aspirations have to do with the Balkans, not with Macedonia. Macedonia is a buffer between Greece and the rest of the Balkans. The Greeks have enormous investments in Serbia, for instance. They've invested in, in Romania. They've invested in uh, Albania. And Macedonia, Macedonia is the last kind of castle, the last moat, the last defense against a Greek takeover of the Balkans. In this sense, Macedonia has become a mortal enemy of Greek economic interests, not political interests. Um, for instance, Macedonia refused to allow the Greeks to take over the telecommunications sector of Macedonia. After the purchase of Okta, Macedonia refused to allow the Greeks to take over the energy sector of Macedonia, which even Serbia did. Serbia allowed the Greeks to take over many industrial sectors. So Macedonia was always resilient and resistant to Greek advances or Greek economic takeover. In the early 90s, the name issue was ancillary and auxiliary, and uh, the Greeks moved heavily into the Macedonian economy. Only when it became clear that Macedonia would be much more open to Western advances in economic terms, to Western investments, only then the, the Greeks made the name issue a, a major issue. Now, the, the Macedonian position is that um, the Greek demand to start with is not reasonable. And any modification of that demand cannot render it reasonable. If I present to you an unreasonable demand, never mind how many times I modify my demand, it would still remain unreasonable. Mm -hmm. So there is no possible modification of the Greek demand. Nimitz is working f in vain. There is no possible modification of this demand that can be accepted by Macedonia. He, that's his job, right? He's paid for that. He's paid for that, but he's an old man, and I believe he's, he's doing it right now out of, more out of, of love or challenge than out of uh, money, I mean, mm -hmm. because of money. He could have retired long ago. Mm -hmm. But it is, the, it is the delusion of the international community that some formula can be found, and the delusion of a big part of the, of the Macedonian public, especially on the left that a, a solution can be found. A solution cannot be found if it is premised on the initial Greek demand. And a solution cannot be found if it denies Macedonians' right, inalienable right, to call themselves as they wish, to speak any language they wish, to have a cultural identity as they choose, and so on and so forth. History is no one's property. Geography is no one's uh, property. And there, are, there is a big uh, body of academic uh, studies which, uh, which claims that uh, Macedonians were never Greeks in any sense of the word, and there is another body which claims that Macedonians were part of the Hellenic uh, sphere of culture, and there will always be arguments, you know, this is ancient history. That's, but that's not the issue. The issue is that Macedonians have the right to call themselves Macedonians, and, and to speak the language they wish, and so on. I think the Macedonian's problem now is that Greece is weak, not that it is strong. The weaker Greek be Greece becomes, 
the less inclined the European Union would be to put pressure on Greece. The weaker Greece becomes, the more it owes money to international financial institutions such as the IMF, the less amenable the international community would be to put pressure on it because they'll be afraid that Greece will not pay back. So now Greece is holding everyone to, at ransom, to ransom. Everyone now is, has been hijacked by Greece. Greece has kidnapped the international financial system. Macedonia's chances now of resolving the issue with the conflict with Greece are nil. And that has very bad implications for Macedonia's future, unfortunately. Also, um, Macedonian minority that lives in Greece, um, we don't have any rights there. As mm. any other minority that lives in Greece, how is this acceptable by Europe? Europe, like every international organization, the European Union is a political club, it's an international organization, and politics is the art of the possible, not the art of the just, not the art of the right, but the art of the might. Mm -hmm. um, the United Nations, the European Union, the United States, these are political clubs which have to operate according to their own interests. The prime interest of the European Union right now is Greece, not Macedonia. Greece holds the key to the integrity of the European Union. Greece owes well over 200 billion uh, dollars that it has to pay back. Greece, if Greece falls apart, the southern flank of NATO would be destroyed uh, or in jeopardy. Greece is a perfect bridge to the Middle East, which is now in flames. Greece is a bridge to Russia because it's Christian Orthodox and so on. Greece controls big part of the economy of the uh, economies of the Balkans, including in Serbia. So Greece is such a 300 pound gorilla in terms of its uh, involvement in both the economics and the politics of the European Union, that the European Union cannot, cannot pursue justice right now. It has to pursue rea realpolitik, has to pursue its interests. And its interests right now is not to pressure Greece into any concessions, because Greece is so fragile, it might fall apart. Ivo Denešnata emisija imame nekoliko informacije. Radio emisijata Glas od Makedonija so Dragica Lopajkovska-Belčevska. Možete da ja sledite se i koja nedela od 6 do 7 na večer na 101.3 FM i da se razanodite so sodrženite koji što ste podgotveni. Za site vaši patuvanja pak, bilo kade vo svetu, ta posebno za Makedonija, Obratite se kaj Dragica, koja se ga raboti za Mozaik Tours, agencija so golema reputacija i mnogogodišno iskustvo. Dragica, možete se kogaž da ja dobijete na telefonot 416-691-7184 ili na mobilnijot 647-780-6549. Za site vaši proslovi i odbeležuvanja koristite gi banke Calite vo crkvete Sveti Kliment Ohridski vo Toronto. Za informaciji i rezervaciji javite se na 416-421-7451. Kanadskoto makedonsko mesto vo Toronto je penzinerski dom koji vi obezbeduva ugodno i harmonično živenje. Za poveke informaciji pobarite a Zlatka na 416-755-9231. Za profesionalno i povoljno dizajniranje na web sajtu vi pobarite gi TJ Hosting na 647-547-3061. I se kako čitajte makedonski vest i se ga i so detaljne informacije i važni nadpisi za makedonskata komuna vo Toronto. Za site vrsti na životno osigurovanje, osigurovanje za kritični bolesti, osigurovanje na vaši od kredit za kukja, invalidsko i zdravstveno osigurovanje i osigurovanje koga patuvate, javite se na 416-503-2285. Nije ki vi pomogneme da ga odberete najpovoljno to i najdobro to osigurovanje za vas. Za doverljivo, profesionalno i praktično popolnuvanje na vašite taksi, javite se na Flint Tax Income Tax Servisi na 416-302-5433 i pobarajte go vecko. Za grižljiva nega na vaša takosa i nezino profesionalno stiliranje pobarajte ja Elizabeta na 647 281 5501 
во Neo Hair Design што се наоѓа на 980 Pay Pavenia во Торонто. Ете, почитувани гледачи, тоа е се што подготвивме за ова емисија Македонско издание 320-та поред, која што можете да ја следите на интернет на macedonianedition.tv. До нашата следна средба, ви благодарам за вашето ценито внимание, пријатно и довидување.